power system analysis under that the stability analysis so today we are going to discuss about the modified Euler's method for power system problems in mathematics already we all know about the modified Euler's method now we are going to apply that algorithm in power system problem so first we just go through a glance of the modified Euler's method so the main objective is to solve the equation x equal to f of x so the independent variable is discretized into time element t0 t1 t2 up to t power k preferably at equidistant algorithm step 1 assume an initial solution x0 and set the time count k equal to 0 step 2 compute the first derivative x dot of k that is a function of x of k third step compute the first estimate of the state vector x power k plus 1 that is equal to x power k plus x dot of k into del t the change in the time and the first derivative of x power k then in step 4 compute the second estimate of the state derivative so that is x dot of k plus 1 which is the function of x power k plus 1 that is the first estimate so if you derive the first estimate you will be getting the second estimate of the state derivative step 5 compute the average of state derivatives so the average value equal to x dot of k plus x dot of k plus 1 divided by 2 so now evaluate the second and first estimate of the state vector so x power k plus 1 equal to x power k plus x dot of k average into the change in time del t so now you can print the value of x uh, x power k plus 1 so after that check the limits check if t is greater than t max whether the maximum time count is occurred or not if not increment the time count t is equal to t plus del t that is nothing but we are incrementing the value of k equal to k plus 1 and go to the step 2 compute the derivative once again and on the remaining steps follows and this steps will be continuous until the convergence occurs so when t is greater than t max terminate the computation so this is a general algorithm of modified Euler's method so corresponding flow chart will be like this so assume the initial state vector and set time count k equal to 0 compute the first derivative first estimate then second estimate then calculate the average value of state derivative then evaluate the second and final estimate of the state vector then print that value check for the condition if then increment the time count go to the second step and again do the iteration process until this k is greater than k max if this condition satisfies then stop the algorithm so now uh, we are going to apply this uh, algorithm in power system problem so before applying that we are going to see some basic uh, thing about the application of swing equation in the modified Euler's algorithm so from the load flow solution the terminal voltage along with the angle del and the active power and the reactive power supplied by the generator are known so for uh, pth node that is uh, consider a generator is at pth bus so let these quantities represented by pp power 0 and qp power 0 here the superscript 0 represents the time equal to 0 that is the initial operating condition so if uh, i suffix pp and i suffix pq are the in phase and the quadrature component at bus p then we can represent like this ipp equal to pp divided by vp naught and ipq equal to qp divided by vp naught so where this pp is a real power and qp is a reactive power so pp is in phase component and qp is the quadrature component at bus p the electrical power injected at generator node p that can be represented as pp is equal to summation q equal to 1 to n EP, EQ, YPQ, cos of theta PQ, del P minus del Q. 
So, this equation we derive directly from the load flow solution where this uh, theta pq is the angle of the y bus element y p q we can get get from the bus admittance matrix and this del p is angle of e p and del q is angle of e q. So, this is your first equation. Now, let us assume v p naught as a reference then the voltage e p angle del p dash that that will be given as v p naught plus q p naught x dot d p by v p naught plus j into p p naught x d p divided by v p naught. So, where this x d p dash is the transient reactance of the fifth generator. So, considering the transient reactance, we are representing the voltage expression like this. So, this is your second equation. So, therefore, the initial generator angle del p is obtained by adding the pre transient voltage angle beta p naught to del p. So, if you add this to, you will be getting del naught p. So, del naught p is equal to del p dash plus beta p naught. So, this is your third equation. So, where del p naught is initial generator angle and beta p is pre transient voltage angle. So, similarly, if V A is the load bus voltage of ith node as obtained from the load flow solution and if uh, P i and Q i are the real and reactive power of the load, then the conductance value G is equal to P i divided by V i square and the susceptance B i equal to Q i divided by V i square where the conductance G is equal to 1 by R and the susceptance is 1 by X. So, now we will see some assumptions for the multi mission system. So, first one is mechanical power input to each generator is assumed to be constant and second one saliency of generator is neglected and the transient generator model will be chosen. And third one the EMF behind the transient reactants will remain constant throughout the post fault period. Fourth assumption assuming all resistances and damping torques are neglected. Fifth one, loads are represented by constant passive admittances. And sixth assumption, the variation of frequency is considered to be negligible and hence the change in load with frequency is neglected. So, these are some assumptions while we are discussing about the multi mission system. So, now the swing equation for the peep generator is given by d square del p by dt square that is equal to p s minus p p by m p that can be given as 1 divided by m p p s minus. So, this second term can be directly taken from the first equation and this equation 5 is a set of n coupled nonlinear second order differential equation. So, now the state variables are introduced to convert each second order swing equation by two coupled first order state differential equation. Let us assume the state variables x1 is equal to del which is a rotor angular position in electrical radiant and x2 equal to del dot that is d del by dt rotor angular velocity in electrical radiant per second. So, these state variables form the component of the state vector. So, x equal to x1, x2 in the matrix form into this del, del dot. Therefore, x1 dot that is equal to x2 which is the first derivative of x1, it is d del by dt equal to omega minus 2 pi f which is the sixth equation. Similarly, the second term x2 dot is, is equal to d square del by dt square which is differentiating the sixth equation you will be getting omega and also we know that from the swing equation d square del by dt square equal to 1 by m into p s minus p p. So, this is your seventh equation. So, here the state vector x power t is equal to omega 1 comma del 1 comma omega 2 del 2 up to omega n del n which is the vector of dimension 2 n cross 1 where n is the number of generators. So, therefore, 
x1 dot is a function of x1 and x2 and x2 dot is also the function of x1 and x2. So, in general we can say in a vector form x is equal to the function of x. So, this is the main objective. So, now the swing equation expressed in terms of state equations can be solved by using modified Euler's method or runge kutta method or many other methods available in the stability analysis. So, now we will discuss about the modified Euler method for power system problems. So, the computational algorithm step 1 obtain a load flow solution for the pre transient condition. So, considering the pre transient case and run the load flow solution and second step calculate the generator internal voltage behind transient reactances using equation 2 and 3. So, which is given here the second equation the voltage equation and the angle del equation here. Using that we can find the generator internal voltage behind transient reactance. So, the state vectors have finite values where all omega value will be equal to 0 under pre transient condition. Step 3 assume the occurrence of fault and initialize time k equal to 0. In some case we assume that as t. Calculate the re reduced admittance matrix for this condition and set the count j equal to 0 here. So, determine the state derivative and calculate the first state estimate. So, del p power k plus 1 equal to the initial value del p power k plus d del p by dt. Similarly, omega p power k plus 1 equal to omega p power k plus d omega by dt. So, this, this two represents the first state estimate of the state derivative. And step 5, the second estimate of the variables can be obtained if derivatives at t is equal to t plus del t are obtained. So, for this, we must have a new value of the voltage at the time t equal to t plus del t so that the generated power can be calculated. So, the new value of voltage is E p power k plus 1 equal to E p power k cos del p power k plus 1 plus j into E p power k sin del p power k plus 1. So, and use these values to obtain the state derivatives. Step 6, determine the average value of state derivative and obtain the second estimate of state variables and the second estimate of internal voltage angles and mission angular speed. So, del p power k plus 1 equal to del p power k plus the average value. So, d del p by dt plus d del p power k plus 1 by dt divided by 2 into del t. Similarly, for omega, omega p power k plus 1 equal to omega p power k plus the average value into del t. Step 7, compute final internal voltage of the generators at the end of t plus del t. So, here we incremented the time to t plus del t. So, the final voltage will be E p power k plus 1 equal to magnitude of E p power k cos del p power k plus 1 plus j into magnitude of E p power k sin del p power k plus 1 and print the result of this E p power k plus 1. So, now check the condition, the clearing time, fault clearing time. So, check if t is less than the clearing time t c. If yes, then advance the time by del t and go to step 4 and find the state derivatives there. So, if the time t is greater than the clearing time, then go to next step, check for the nodal admittance matrix, check if g a equal to 0, if s, the nodal admittance matrix is changed corresponding to the post fault condition and a new reduced admittance matrix is obtained. Now, set j is equal to j plus 1. So, already j equal to 0. So, now 0 plus 1. And next, set the time value t equal to t plus del t or in otherwise, we can say k is equal to k plus 1. Go for the second iteration. So, again, after setting this k equal to k plus 1, finally, we are checking once again 
whether the t is less than or equal to t max maximum time if s yes, go to step 4 and find the state derivative if this t is greater than t max then terminate the process of computation so this is the computational algorithm of modified euler's method for the power system problem so the corresponding flow chart we are going to see so this is the flow chart of modified euler's method for power system problem so carry out the load flow corresponding to pre transient condition in the first step then calculate the internal voltage along with the angle using the second and third equation and modify the network data for the period when the fault takes place set t equal to 0 and obtain the new reduced admittance matrix set k equal to 0 and j equal to 0 and now calculate the state derivative then compute the first state estimate for t equal to t power k plus 1 and compute the first estimate of e p power s for t equal to t power k plus 1 and using this value compute the second estimate of state derivative then find the average value of state derivative then obtain the second estimate of state variables then finally the second estimate of e p power s for t equal to t power k plus 1 so after finding this e p power k plus 1 you can print the result print x power k plus 1 then check for the uh, time whether time is less than the clearing time if yes increment k equal to k plus 1 and go to the step 4 here and if t is greater than tc then check for the nodal admittance matrix and is j equal to 0 if yes then modify the network data and obtain a new reduced admittance matrix increment the k count and increment the j count go to the step 4 if j is not equal to 0 then increment k equal to k plus 1 and finally check whether the time t is greater than t max if not go to step 4 if time is greater than t max then terminate the program so this is the complete flow of the modified euler's method for power system problems